guys, welcome to my channel. So uh, today we're going to make some fabric envelopes as promised. Um, first I'll show you everything that you'll need for this project and then we will go ahead and make a couple and then um, at the end I'll show you how I decorate mine and um, some of the things that you could use to decorate with um, if you choose to do that. So this project is super super simple. All you need is some fabric. Um, I have two out. I'm, gonna, I'm planning on making two envelopes today because I literally made 58 <laughs> envelopes the other day and I was like, well, we might as well make that 60. So um, yeah, I have two fabrics out for my envelopes. And then I also have two pairs of scissors out. One of them is just your, your regular basic scissors, right? And that's to cut the fabric. And then the other pair that I have out are pinking shears and these are not totally necessary um, but what they do if you don't already know is when you're finished sewing your envelope um, we'll go around the edges and just um, pink the edges just um, to make it like this zigzaggy pattern and the reason why we do that is so that the fabric doesn't fray easily along the edges. Um, if you don't have these, it's not necessary. You can do it without them um, and just make sure that you get all of the loose threads that are coming off. I normally just like pull those off um, and then it won't fray beyond where you've stitched it. So um, these aren't totally necessary, just kind of a stylistic thing. Um, I also have out a glue stick and then I have this, this is like a scoring knife actually, but um, but you really need a bone folder. I just don't know where I put mine. I've misplaced it somewhere. So um, this will do just fine. Whatever you have, you could use the back of your scissors if you want to. And then I also have a couple of pieces of paper. Um, and these pages are very long um, or very tall rather. So. That's really the only rule as far as pages go, um, and that's just because you're going to be folding it up into an envelope shape later. So you don't want um, a teeny short page and try to fold that up, if that made any sense. So this, this page in general is uh, about seven inches by 10 inches. The width of your paper is going to be the width of your envelope, so or thereabouts. So, um, so yeah, just choose the width of your paper to be the width that you want your envelope to be. All right, and then the last thing that I have out is my sewing machine, which is off camera, but. Um, but we will be needing the sewing machine to uh, sew around the edges of our envelopes in a minute. So with that being said, let's get started making some. So the first thing I do is get everything out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I do is I go ahead and cut my fabric to the size of the paper. So, all right, it's so rainy outside. I hope the lighting's okay. It's just, it's just been a dull week. So I normally leave about a half an inch along all of the edges of the paper. And um, I'm just going to guesstimate. I, I'm not a measurer. Um, if you have the rotary tool, you can do it that way. Um, I'm lazy and I don't want to pull all that stuff out. So. I'm just doing it this way. It's not a big deal. Okay, so that's my first one. I'm going to go ahead and cut the second one as well, just because I'm making two of them today. Okay, just like that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our glue stick. 
and we're just gonna glue the page directly down onto the fabric. Um, the reason I'm using a glue stick is because it dries super fast and I don't need this um, to be what sticks my paper down to my fabric. Actually, whoops, what sticks my paper down to my fabric is the sewing. So, um, you know, obviously I don't wanna run wet glue through my sewing machine. So I just use the glue stick to kind of get it where I want it to be. And then it's super easy for me to run it through the sewing machine in a minute. So yeah, I just used a glue stick and I just go ahead and stick my paper down kind of where I want it. I leave that space along the edge. Um, doesn't matter if it's exactly the same amount on each side, but just enough for me to go around and pink the edges later. Uh, that's normally what I kind of aim for. So I normally flip it over and then just kind of smooth out the other side because um, it kind of gets a little wrinkly. So yeah, now the fabric's all smoothed out. And yeah, that's that one. We'll go ahead and glue this one as well. Okay, so um, yeah, at this point, I'm just gonna let this glue dry for a second and then we will start running it through the sewing machine. Okay guys, so the next step is to go ahead and run it through the sewing machine. I let this dry for about 10 minutes or so, so um, it doesn't take too long. Um, me get my stuff together. You might see my dog. He's kind of hanging out with me while I do this. <laughs> and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, I will kind of give you some guidance after the fact, but um, what I'm going to do is set this to just a zigzag stitch because that's what I did with all the others. You can literally use any kind of stitch you want to with this. It doesn't matter. Um, I just, I am partial to the zigzag stitch. <laughs> but um, yeah. So there's one little secret to sewing these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get it started. Okay, now at the long edge, I'm starting on the long edge of the paper. What I do once I get it started a little bit is I start to lift the other side from the back and I just curl it up. And the reason why I do that is so that basically when I fold up the envelope, the paper will crunch on the inside of the envelope if I don't do this. Um, so this kind of stretches out how much fabric I'm using in proportion to the paper, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so I, I have made them before where like I fold it up, right? And, um, and it just, the paper just crunches down inside of it because I didn't leave myself enough fabric. Um, and I don't know why it works that way, but uh, that's just how it works. So to remedy that problem, just curl up the back end of the paper as you go. just going to go along the wide edge this part you don't have to do anything crazy just so as usual another thing to note real quick is that I sewed pretty much right along the edge of the paper um, because the fabric we're gonna cut in a minute and and line it up with the page So I'm stopping right at the corner of this page and then I'm just going to turn it and keep going. I'm actually working from the side of my sewing machine rather than right in front of it so it's a little bit awkward but um, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, but I will give you a close up 
uh, when we get finished. So now I'm just going to cut my thread and then I will show you that in a second. I'm going to go ahead and do the second envelope as well. Okay guys, so I just wanted to kind of go back and explain exactly what was happening. Like I said, I was kind of at a weird angle trying to sew, so my stitches ran off a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I can still work with that. It's not so far off that um, it's, it's destroyed. So um, what I was trying to explain is that when you're running it through the sewing machine on the long edge of the page, what you want to do is go ahead and start your stitches and then from the back curl it up as you feed it through just so that um, as you're stitching you're catching more of the fabric than the paper um, and that is because when we go to fold this up we don't want the paper on the inside to get crinkly because there's not enough fabric on the outside if that makes any sense um, it's just one of the tricks of the trade. Um, so now you know the secret. So um, the next step is to go ahead and pink our edges. If you're not using pinking shears, you can just cut them straight along the, the paper edge. Um, it's totally up to you. It really doesn't matter. I just like having a little bit of fabric hanging over uh, the edge just so that the paper is not showing through. Um, because essentially the, the paper is to sturdy the envelope um, so that it's actually usable because um, just fabric is a little difficult to get anything into. So I'm just going to go along the edges with my pinking shears. doesn't have to be perfect, like I said, just to get a basic zigzaggy line. Um, if you're not using pinking shears, um, again, you want to make sure you get all the frayed edges off of there um, just to kind of not allow the fabric to start acting up. Okay, so now I have gone around and pinked my edges. So I just have this little zigzaggy pattern along the edge. Um, and like I said, that just kind of keeps the fabric from fraying along the edges. And then um, now I want to mention a couple of other ways you could have done this, okay? Um, I'm making them this way because this is how I, I always end up making them, but there are a lot of other pretty cool ways to do this. So the first thing that um, I was thinking while I was sewing this was that you don't have to make this into a rectangle. You could have cut the, the paper to be kind of uh, rounded off along the edges and then gone around the edges and sewn like that um, so that your flap ends up being rounded along the edges as well. So that's one option that you may consider. Um, I'm actually considering making some like that as well. Since I made 58 other envelopes this way, I decided I would make my last two this way as well. But um, yeah, that's totally up to you if you wanna do it that way or any other way um, that you can think up. Another thing is we're about to fold these up like this and glue along the edges of the envelope. And if you don't want to use glue, you don't have to. You can go ahead and fold it up before you put it through the sewing machine, like this, and then go along and sew around. Um, 
I like it that there is a strip of sewing right here. So if you do that, you won't have this strip of sew sewing uh, along the bottom edge. Well, once you fold it up, it's the top edge of the envelope part. Um, but that's totally up to you. You can choose one way or the other, or you can go back in and sew, you know, a different sort of stitch, like a straight stitch or something, um, just to close it up. But I, I use glue. It works, works just fine. I used um, tacky glue, so it's not going to come up in the future. It's very sturdy once you glue it together. But those are just some options for you if you prefer to be different. That's totally cool. I like different too. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fold up our envelopes. Um, so one thing that that is completely up to you is how high up you want this envelope to go. I normally fold it so that there is maybe two inches worth of envelope above the rest. So I just fold it up. Um, about like that so that there's two inches remaining and that two inches becomes my flap at the top um, but if you wanted maybe a squatter envelope you could fold it down here or something like that I just I just like the look of this so I'm gonna kind of do it that way um, just using my scoring knife <laughs> but you can use your bone folder or you can also use the back of your scissors that works the same um, whatever just to kind of make sure that everything is flattened out So I'm just going to run it along the bottom edge there and make sure that everything is straight because I am prone to failure especially on camera um, Okay, I think that's all right and Then um, I'm going to go ahead and fold my top flap down. So when I fold my top flap, I don't want to fold too far where I bend this fabric here. So I'm just going to fold it till I'm just a hair above that fabric. And I hope that you got to see what I, I just did. But this way, see where my crease is there? I'm, I'm folding it just a hair above this fabric here so I'm not bending that. So I'm just going to go ahead and flatten that out and there you have it there's the basic form of the fabric envelope make sure that's straight and then we'll just go ahead and do the exact same thing to this leaving about two inches up at the top just go ahead and score along the bottom and fold it just a hair above the fabric just so I'm not bending it a hair or two <laughs> this also kind of gives me a good um, place to do some decorating on the flap as well you don't have to decorate on the flap sometimes I decorate down at the bottom of the envelope um, but we'll get to that in a second because now we need to glue it down so I just run the glue straight along the stitches that I just made on two sides. Hoping I stay in frame for all of this. And then I just flatten that up. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing to this one. All right. So there is your basic construction for the envelopes. Now is the fun part. So um, I'm just going to show you some ideas for things that you could use to decorate with if you choose to do so. The first things that I always try to make tons of are these ruffles. This is just fabric that I've scrunched. Um, actually it goes this way and I run it through the sewing machine and just kind of fold it over, fold it over and just make a ruffle um, as long as my scrap fabric is, uh, doesn't really matter. And then um, sometimes I'll just use these along the front like that, 
these obviously will not go with that fabric color but um, but yeah you get the point of that so I have tons of those in all different kinds of uh, fabric patterns I also make these little um, like little fabric clusters and whatnot and um, those are just super easy just pop one on and um, and call it done um, so yeah I I I tend to just kind of I, I go through all of my scrap fabrics right and then um, I just kind of glue them together just like a, a just a little spot right I just put a little bit of a dab of glue right here and just like glued several pieces together and then um, and then I decorate this with like some little buttons or you know this is like a little piece of lace or whatever um, so I did this one the exact same way and then this one I decorated with buttons as well buttons are kind of my favorite thing to decorate these with <laughs> uh, but yeah um, so that's I have several of those as well and then um, some other things that you may want to use are things like lace um, got several pieces of lace here that we could use and then um, I also have a couple of ribbons um, just various colors of ribbon and then um, I have also used sequins which here's my big giant pack of sequins <laughs> So I've been trying to use these up as much as possible because I have so many of them now. And then um, some other ideas are like little paper bits. Um, I thought that this would be really pretty somewhere. You know, I don't know. Um, or you could use something like this. Just These are just things that I stamped onto paper and then cut them out. So um, they're just like little bits of ephemera. There's also like Tim Holtz ephemera these are like his butterflies or whatever um, here's like a little tag of some sort which would look nice on one maybe so you could just do like a mini collage here or here or something like that um, so that's an idea and then um, on a couple of the ones that I so far I actually put some of these quotes from the um, Tim Holtz small talk pack I put um, some of these little snippets on there um, just like down here in the corner or something like that just just for decoration or whatever just to make it fun um, and then if, if you're a quilter then you know all about yo-yos you might know about hexagons as well um, there's some really great tutorials on how to make both of these on YouTube so definitely check them out I am actually surprisingly I'm going to use a hexagon and I made this for the first time yesterday <laughs> So I, right now I just have like a little pin in it to hold it together, but I'm going to do some sewing here in a second with my thread and needle, um, and I'm going to put that on here. So I'm actually, I'm thinking that I want to do that with this one. And um, another thing that I use often are just brads, like these little things, little clip things. And um, I put the brad... You know, you could put the brad like straight through here if you had a big enough brad, or even if you like the look of the small brad in there, um, that would be super simple. And of course I got sidetracked and I didn't tell you the rest of it. <laughs> um, but you could also put um, like little flowers or something like that on the front if you wanted to, whatever. Um, I think those are super cute. And then of course, uh, buttons, like, like whatever kind of buttons. I've got a ton of buttons here, but you know, you could literally, actually I think that's, that might be what I'm going to do to this one because it's, it has so many colors in it. I'm just going to kind of choose a color and, um, and just put a button straight on it because, um, sometimes when there's too many colors to work with, it's hard to find something that's not clashy with it. So yeah, just maybe find one that looks nice on there um, the the possibilities are really endless I just gave you some ideas on what you could do but I mean seriously whatever you can think up 
you could probably put on here and it would look really good so don't be afraid to try new things all right so i'm going to find a button that i think i like on here and then i'll go ahead and sew my my uh hexagon together and then um, my plan is to put my plan is to put this brad through the hexagon once I sew it together so I can take this pin out. I'm going to put it through there and then um, I'm actually going to lay the lace down and then layer that on top of it and I just think that's going to be so pretty. So yeah. Actually you know what I think what I really want to do is I want to take this cord and I'm just going to tie a bow in this cord and then um, I'm just going to glue that straight down to the top. So yeah, um, I really just like the colors of these two together. Okay guys, they are all done. These are all on Etsy now, so definitely go check them out. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, bye.